In this video, we're going to be covering the normal distribution. So what is the normal distribution? Well, it is a bell-shaped curve that looks like this. The mean and the median are the same here. So that's right in the middle. Uh, and it has four other properties that I'd like to discuss. Uh, the first one is that it is a symmetrical distribution. Uh, which, what does that mean? That means that there is a, whatever is below the mean or median is the same as what is above the mean and median. The second property is that the values cluster around the mean. So we have more values around the mean, and as we get further away, it kind of spreads out. The third property is that the interquartile range is approximately 1.33 standard deviations. I'll explain a little bit about more what that means in just a moment. Uh, and the last property is that six standard deviations approximate the range. And really what this means is that most of the data lies within six standard deviations. Negative three to positive three. So three standard deviations below the mean, to three standard deviations above the mean, most of the data will lie within that range. So one way to think about this is, again, uh, for the normal distribution, this means that our data fits a curve like this picture here. Which, uh, one way to think about that is, let's consider the area under the curve here, the area under this curve, so that region, if we define that region to be one, what that means is that would take care of all of the data, right? If we're thinking about these as percentages or of total amount of your data in your whatever example you're doing, if this value is one below that, so this means the area under the curve represents all of our data, we can think of, well, where is 50% of our data? 50% of our data lies below the median, which happens to also be the mean for the normal distribution. So the area under this curve would be 0.5 from all the way over here to the left, up until the median. Also, if we look at the right side over here, this area would be 0.5 as well. So let's think about the interquartile range statement here. It says the interquartile range is approximately 1.33 standard deviations. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, reminder that the interquartile range is Q1 to Q3. So in other words, Q3 minus Q1. And what is that? The interquartile range tells you the middle 50% of data. So somewhere here we have minus one standard deviation. And over on the other side, we have plus one standard deviation. If the interquartile range is approximately 1.33 standard deviations, then that middle 50% is approximately two-thirds of a standard deviation below the median, or the mean here, excuse me. They're the same, but specifically I, I meant the mean there. So between negative two-thirds and positive two-thirds, approximately, 50% of our data lies. So the area here that I am marking is 50% of the data. That's where 50% of our data is, which tells us 25% is here and 25% is over on the right side. Now, of course, this picture isn't uh, perfectly accurate, uh, but that's what happens in a normal distribution. That 50% of our data lies between negative two-thirds standard deviation to positive two-thirds standard deviation uh, relative to the mean. 
And again, the six standard deviations uh, just means that if we go out to negative three and positive three, then most of the data lies between negative three and positive three. These parts out here are, don't really contribute to much of the data. Okay. So we have said this next statement before, but I'd like to remind you that approximately Sixty-eight point two six percent of the data fall within one standard deviation, approximately ninety five point four four percent fall within two standard deviations and 99.73% fall within three standard deviations. And for all of these, I should say plus or minus one. So that was my mistake. Plus or minus one standard deviation, plus or minus two standard deviations, plus or minus three standard deviations. So the plus or minus three standard deviations is the six standard deviation approximate uh, that approximates the range. Right, because we are negative three to positive three, so that uh, is a total of six of our standard deviations. So from negative three to positive three, ninety nine point seven three percent of the data uh, lies within that range. Which again, if the whole area under this curve is one, that would tell us that the amount of area between negative three and positive three is point nine nine seven three. Okay. All right, so there's two more things I want to say in this video, and then in the next video, we'll go over examples on how to use this information for uh, real world situations. But the uh, last two things I want to say is I want to remind ourselves of the Z score. So the Z score is z is equal to x minus mu over sigma. What does that mean, right? Uh, the z-score is how many standard deviations your value is above or below the mean. Right? So the value that we are plugging in here is this value x. We subtract away mu, which is the mean. And we divide by sigma, which is the standard deviation. That tells us z. Uh, and that kind of normalizes our value uh, relative to the standard deviations. So if this value x is exactly one standard deviation below the mean, then whenever we plug that value in and we subtract away mu, we'll get negative sigma up on the top. And then we divide by sigma, so we get negative one, which tells us again that it is exactly one standard deviation below the mean. Okay, so that's how we use this formula and what that means. Uh, often it might be useful to reverse this situation. So what if we knew the z-score and we wanted to find the value that was uh, relative to that z-score or that was equivalent to that z-score uh, in the problem that we're working on? Well, we just do the inverse function for that. And what is the inverse function? So the inverse function... is x is equal to mu plus z sigma, which makes sense. How do we solve for x here? If we multiply both sides by sigma, we get rid of the sigma on the right, and it becomes z sigma on the left. 
and then we add mu to both sides and that'll solve for x. And that's exactly what's written here. So we have these two formulas that we will use in the next video. Uh, and that's it for this video.